Hey everyone, this is Alex, and I am going to do a mega book review for you guys. Um, since I haven't done a book review in a while, and I've been meaning to book review these books, um, I just figured I would make it a four books for the price for the one video. Um, so yeah, I've previously book reviewed, these are all books part of different series, um, and I've book reviewed their other books to them, so you can find those in the um, video bar up above, or you can, uh, click on my name tab, and you can view them from my profile if you want, so, yeah, uh, anyways, the first book I'm gonna book review for you guys is Jessica Rules the Dark Side, um, by Beth Fantasy, and I found that this was a really good book, um, I know I book reviewed the first book, last year, I believe, around this time last year, um, this was, this is the sequel to it, um, I have to say that this was a really, really good book, um, it starts, you know, it's got, like, murder, it's got romance, it's got the action, it's really, really amazing, um, it has, it's mainly told from Jessica's point, point of view, but there's also Mindy, her best friend, Ornero, the beach bum cousin of Lucius's, of Lucius and Lucius's point of view. But Ronero and Lucius's point of view, they're in letter form. Whether that's email or actual letters, it is in their points, it is in those points of views. Um, Mindy's and Jessica's are kind of current moment eyewitness account points of views. Um, so yeah, what I really liked about this is this takes place, I believe, a few months after their wedding. Um, if you haven't read the wedding, I'll post a link to it in the down bar. Um, if you have read the wedding, you're going to want to go back and reread it because she recently updated the wedding, I believe. So, you're just going to have to go back and reread it. Um, don't feel bad because I actually have to also. Um, so... I have to like, get through this book review fast because I've done this twice and both of them are 27 minutes long. So I'm going to cut this down to like four minute chunks for each book. Anyways, um, Jessica has to solve the murder of one of <clears throat> Lucius's uncles. He was killed in the, um, Vladisview Castle and... It's not looking good because Lucius's stake was found at the scene of the crime. It was his stake that uh, killed the person, but Lucius didn't do it. And so Lucius is kind of sent to jail. Jessica is forced to um, kind of, she's forced to look at the wedding, or not the wedding, look at the murder and figure out who did it, who had the motive, who had the timing who had the motive, who had the opportunity, and, um, just, like, all the basic things you need for a murder thing, um, motive, opportunity, and, um, access to, I guess that works, that's with opportunity, oh well, um, but she, she has to figure out who did it, and Lucius is in jail, and he's not being fed any blood, so he's kind of, like, dying, kind of not dying, I don't know what it's called, I have a word for it, um, but Lucius is in jail, sitting in jail, while his wife is forced to figure out who did it, why they did it, all underneath the eye of the council, who, um, already they think that she is a terrible leader due to some incidences that involve, um, like, they already think she's a um, cause she had like a hallucination incident, an accident, um, <clears throat> earlier, but, so she's under the critical eye right now, she's being critically watched, one mistake, and it's, um, it's literally the end of her, uh, it's literally the loss of power to her and Lucius, so, um, yeah, what, I really liked about this book was that you didn't, it, I didn't expect the murderer to be 
who it was is really a shock and a big surprise. So, um, you're kind of in for a surprise. You really don't actually realize who the murderer is, kind of until she begins to suspect. But even then, I was thrown for, like, I was thrown about it because it was like, what? No. No way. But they ended up being murdered, so. Um, yeah, it's really weird, but it's really good. So, I really love this book, and I have nothing bad to say about it. So, yes. The next book I'm going to be, I'm going to be reviewing for you guys is almost everything and this is by Kate Holloway and this is from the Vampire Princess series um this was the first two books which were almost to die for and almost final curtain um was the last book review that I posted for you guys I believe so this is the third book in the series and this came out in February um so it's I've had this book for about a few months and just because Guy came out in January, but I kind of got it in. Never mind, I'll explain that. I might post one of the other videos and do like a brief explanation of it. I don't know. Um. So, Anna had two guys at the end of the last one. Nikolai and Elias. She's kind of got another guy now. Thompson slash Matt. He is the bully from the first two books. Uh ends up being her boyfriend in this novel and that's really awkward like I don't know if they're dating for sure because it hasn't been 100% established but I'm pretty sure they are um so she meets another vampire um and he's from the south I believe his name is Louis or Louis Louis I believe um he is a southern vampire and he is supposed, I don't really want to explain it, <clears throat> but he's from the south and they're supposed to, like, there's supposed to be a wedding ceremony between the, um, northern coven, which is her family's coven, her dad's coven, and the southern coven, which is Lewis's coven. There's supposed to be a marriage between them. Um, but they kind of never happened because Anna made the mistake of letting the bride out of it. And so she has to, they have to find another, um, bride. And she kind of ends up volunteering, Nick, not Nikolai, Elias. And it's a little awkward, just so you guys know. Um, it's really, really good. It's really fast paced. Um. Once again, she's in another fight with her dad, and her mom is involved also, but, um, more or less the coven has turned against, um, Anna, Elias, Nikolai, her mom, and her dad, um, so the five of them have to work together in order to stop the coven from going into a blood frenzy, because they haven't gone hunting in a while, and so it's, um... They're kind of in this weird state of mind, um, where they're not thinking rationally, and so, um, Anna has to come up with something to save not only the vampire coven's lives, but her, the witch coven, too. Um, because they're all kind of at risk at the moment, because it's, um, the queen is supposed to sacrifice herself, which in this case would be Anna's mom, but she kind of didn't want to <laughs> so it's a little awkward but her parents managed to work it out and she has to she's kind of put in a rut where she has to choose between being a vampire full-time or a witch full-time but that kind of can't happen because um they're both a part of her and they're so intermixed that if you take one away you're taking the other away also so it could eventually end up killing her. So it's kind of awkward um, for her. And she's got three boys after her. And it's really, really weird because she's. Nikolai's convinced that she's not gonna be in. She's not going to um, 
last in her relationship with Thompson, and she's willing to give her relationship with the bully a try. And Nicola, or Elias is currently, or is about to be sent off to get married, and so it's really awkward because it's in its own weird function at the moment. I really can't explain it, but um, she's kind of in a rut, so she's got to work it out. Um, but it's it's really good. All these books are really good, so yeah. Um, the next book I'm gonna review is Spellbound. This is the third and this is the third and final book. Not very final, but it's the final book for Sophie's point of view in the Hex Hall series. Um, Rachel Hawkins has said on her blog that she's going to, to do a spin-off series in another character's point of point of view. I think um based off of just what I've read in this book. I think it's going to end up being Izzy and Torin, who are characters that you do meet in this novel. Um, Izzy is a Brannock, and Torin is a warlock who kind of stuck himself in a mirror and hasn't gotten out. And he's been stuck in that mirror since, I believe, they said the 16th century. Long time to be stuck in a mirror. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, I think there's... I think she's going to end up doing a spin-off series based off of those two characters. Um, I'm not entirely sure, but that's, that's just my estimation. But um, this was a really, really good book. Um, but it was really sad, too, because it was bawling at the end because the character passes away. Um, they didn't die for a bad reason. They died saving Sophie. So, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think you can go wrong if you're trying to save Sophie's life. But it's still very sad, and, um, I was bawling, sadly. Um, she does end up seeing her parents, um, again. The thing that, at the, at the end of the first, the second novel is, she wanted to see her mom, her dad, Cal, Jenna, and Archer, she sees all of them. Um, she ends up going back to Hex Hall, and it's not by choice. In all honesty, it's kind of, um, she's kind of forced to. Um, and her worst, her and her dad's worst fears have been realized that there are demons being raised at Hex Hall on Green Malkin Island. And it is not looking very good for any of the characters. Um, they literally have to fight to figure out how to um, live because they're all really stuck at the moment. Um, it's, it's really weird to explain but difficult at the same time. Um, Sophie is... Sophie is back at Hex Hall, um, um, the Kasnoff sisters, uh, realize something that they can use against Sophie, and Sophie doesn't like it, so it's, it's your little, it's really, really good though, um, it's divided into three parts, so, which, I don't really understand why, but it works, I guess, um, I really don't know how to explain it, um, I don't think I'm going to try, <laughs> um, but Sophie is, um, she's confused, I think, for, um, not a lot of this novel, but some of this novel, she really is confused, um, she learns some things, and they really throw her for a loop, and she has to figure them out on her own, kind of, because her dad's not there, her mom's not there, and, um, She's really thrown for a loop and confused, but I think she ends up working out the pieces that she needs to work out beautifully. So, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, the next, the last book I'm going to book review, bleh, not book review, but the last book I'm going to review for you guys is Goddess Interrupted. This is a sequel to Goddess Test. And this picks up 
this starts at the end of summer, um, where she's going back to start her um, next six months with Henry, and <clears throat> you meet Sister Persephone in this novel, the sister and the ex-wife of the husband. Um, and it's really, really fast paced and amazing. Um, you, you see a different side to Henry and Kate's relationship in this novel. Um, you really see them in the down pieces of their relationship. Uh, I can't even, I can't even really begin to describe it, but you see them kind of in the worst part. When they say for better or for worse in your marriage vows, you're you're seeing them at their worst, but not at their very worst. You're just seeing them in it's an awkward place for them, and it's especially kind of awkward for Kate, um, because she was expecting something a little different for um, coming back after uh, the summer. She's expecting a different reaction. From Henry, but it didn't come out the way she planned. Um, anyway, Kronos, who is the father of the six originals, which would be Henry, Diana, Walter, Philip, Calliope, and Sophia, their father comes back, or he's released from Tartarus, and he's, um, it's not very good, let's just say. He's decided he's going to go after the Olympians and um, go after them. It's not good. Um, but they're, they're literally out of war against their father, and Calliope has sided with Daddy Dearest. So they're kind of doomed because Calliope was the reason that they were able to, I guess, trap Kronos the last time that something happened, and now that she's, um, sided with Daddy Dearest, they're a little, um, irked and worried because they now have to come up with alternative plans as to figuring out how to stop Kronos from essentially taking over the world. Um, it's, it's really weird. I can't describe it, but, um, you get, um, the book finishes at a really weird place. Um, Ava and Kate decide that they're going to go look for Rhea, who is the mother of the six originals. Um, they decide they're going to go look for her to see if they can get her to help them. And they... It's not a bad idea, because they could use all the help they can get with defeating Kronos. Um, so they go, they, they go look for her, and then they, something happens. Kate ends up getting captured by Calliope, and that's the end of the novel, um, is where she's captured. But, um, you get a little bonus piece in it. From Henry. It's from Henry's point of view, and I guess it's supposed to be, I don't know if it's supposed to be a sneak peek into Goddess Inheritance, or it's an in-between, I'm really not sure, but you see Henry, um, Henry's point of view, you, the, re the relationship does get better towards the end of this novel, um, they both come to the realization that they can't live without the other. They really don't. They love each other. And so they um, they stop playing their little games and decide that they both want to work on this relationship, that they both love each other enough that it's worth looking into and trying to um, decide just how they're going to fix it. And so you see them go from worse from like kind of their a bad point in their relationship to a point where you know they're ready to start talking, um, but it, that does take time, and 
your heart kind of breaks for Kate because she wants it to go back to how it was um, towards, I believe, the night of their wedding, towards that moment and a few other possible moments in between. Um, she she desperately does love Henry, um, but she's James kind of whispering in her ear that, you know, you shouldn't do it, it's your choice. Um, He's kind of whispering things in her ear that make her confused. Um, and I think James is a potential problem for their... Uh, James is a potential problem, I, I think. Um, but I think at the same time that Henry and Kate, Kate have overcome this... Op they're overcoming the, overcoming the obstacle of James. Um, that they should be okay, but at the same time, you're a bit worried because it's, it's really awkward for it. Because James is a problem. Um, I don't know if a lot of people see that, but he is a problem to their marriage. That it's, it's a worried, it's a worrisome thing. But, um, as I said, I have nothing bad to say about any of these novels. They're all really amazing. Um, I'm a little sad, you know, that uh, Spellbound, the Hacks Hollow series is over, but, you know, that's okay because I have a lot of other book series that are, like, still, that are books, books are still being coming out for, and I've picked up a lot of these series back when they first came out, and I'm just kind of amazed at how many books that they're still writing, and it's like, are you ever going to be done? Um, but yeah, so, um, thanks for watching, and I'm sorry that this was really long, but this is actually shorter than some of my other videos, because I have done this video, I think, three times already, and they're all, like, 25 minutes and above, so, yeah, that's it, I'm gonna say bye, guys, before this hits 22 minutes, so bye!